So, ever since that Silverback released the V2 upgrade kit for the MDRX AG series, I've been bombarded with questions and emails through the Facebook page and through the direct email address on doing a video about fitting the V2 upgrade kit. And when I first got the V2 upgrade kits, because I was along with many people to get like the first batch of them that were sent out, I planned to do it, and then it's just something I never got around to doing. However, if you've seen my It's Time to Sell Up video, I was moving some bits on. You might have seen videos appear on the YouTube channel and then disappear. That just means they've been moved on to somebody, and I just took the video down. The PP19 one, I think, is the only one still left up there. So this is going to a chap called Liam. And I did offer that, you know, I could set this up however way you wanted it if you were the lucky person to pick it up. So he asked me a couple of things. Uh, so he's got six mags with it. It's going to come with a couple of batteries, which are more than he needs to get started. Um, I did offer to fit the V2 upgrade kit, which he wants me to do, which is great. And he does want it locked into semi-auto, running at DMR powers. So we're going to do that as well. As well as doing that today... I've also had a question about the mag release, someone wanting to convert it to the, the 556 style. Um, so we'll be looking at that as well. Now, I'm not going to be doing this probably the exact same way that Silverback did it. But if you watch the Silverback videos, they're very good tutorial videos, better than having nothing. But it would be nice as they're doing it if they explained it, which I'm going to try and get done for you guys today. So here is the MDR. It's number 2204. It's had work done to it in the past. You guys remember this rifle. So first of all, I'm going to pop the three lower pins out, which sometimes they can be a bit reluctant, especially back ones. So we'll just give it a tap with a hammer. There we go. I'd rather it be tight than loose. I'm gonna flip this upside down. We're gonna pull the pins out or attempt to. One, two, and three. Once we've done that, we can remove the lower section. Now I'm going to get onto the second part of that video that I was discussing. So a guy wanted to remove his mag release, and he was trying to remove all this from this one side. Now what you want to do is you actually want to loosen this up. So this is a T. I'm using a T27. It could be a T30. T30. No, so T25 would go in there, but this one's a T27. It seems to be a nice solid fit. So what you want to do is just unscrew from this one side. You can pull that side of the mag release off. The other side will fall off like this, which is the part I believe you were trying to get to. Now, I've never took this apart um, because I've never had the need to, but it does just like these pull apart like that. So... You were right in, in the sort of the thinking that you were having that this can pull off, but it is on there very, very tight. So you might not be able to do that when it's installed on the gun. So hopefully that helps you. If you are watching, it has helped you. Pop down in the comments below and say hello. Because you guys know I love interacting with you all. I'm just going to pop this straight back on. And yes, you, you very much might be able to push this out from this one side and pull it, but you're not going to really get the purchase on there um, like when doing it with the way I just showed you. So we'll remove that lower and we're going to set it to one side. So now we're going to get to specking up Liam's MDR. You'll notice this is not standard from the times when I was doing a lot of gearbox uh, work. Not something that I still do, um, just because the times have moved on. A T25, I think it is. No, that one's going to be a T20. Some of these are rubbed off, so I can't see what they are. So yeah, T20. And we're going to remove the gearbox from the gun. And we're going to do that just by removing these two T20s. like so on the back section and then we can pull the pin off as well we can just remove the metal clip like that and we can remove the pin and what we'll do we'll set all this to one side 
if you are following along with this guide and you're doing your, your own MDR, feel free to pause it, catch up, and then continue the video when you're ready. So we're gonna pop the two side plates off. Very easy to do, just a little latch on each of them. And I believe this is a T25. No, it's not, it's a T20. <laughs> I keep hitting that wrong, don't I? I'm pretty sure it's a T20. Yeah, T20. Torx 20 screwdrivers. Now, if you haven't got a set of uh, screwdrivers, I, I bought these Stanley ones. It comes in like a little stand and you've got loads on there. It's one of the most useful screwdriver sets I think I've ever purchased. I think I had it off Amazon. And we're just going to go ahead and remove the two side fixtures. Once we've disabled or just pulled the connector off on the cable, we can slide the gearbox out. So Liam, if you are watching, this has the full 100% cylinder. I do have the 75% cylinder somewhere in a little box. So if I can find that, I'll ship it out to you. It is bronze, so it matches the gearbox. You'll see this was mine. So it didn't have the etch in there. So this is the only gearbox that I did that didn't have this. Um, so yours will be very much unique. Um, as well as doing this, I think he wanted me to do um, a hot nub install, so we'll be doing that as well. So we can slide the cable through here, like so. We've got little Allen key segments here. Is it a 2mm? It's not a 2mm, it's 2.5. So we've got one. We'll just carefully remove that from the front there. This is just to change the the uh, function from select fire just to semi only. Pull that out, it's got a little washer on there. So we've got that board, pull that off. We have the semi only board. Put the one with the washer back on the back like that. We'll loosely screw this in. This isn't relevant to the, uh, the V2 upgrade set, but we need to do it as well for Liam, so we'll do it while we've got the opportunity. We'll loosely just nip that down, we don't want to break the board. Once we've done that, we can slide the cable through and push it towards the rear. And then all we're going to do is just make sure it doesn't kink like so. And we're going to sit it just under that metal pin there. Uh, once we've done that, what we'll do, just so we're ready to install the gearbox, we're just going to pull this through like that and just slightly bend the cable. It should sit there. We'll get to doing that better once we uh, we finish the gearbox. So we have the gearbox here. That's the full auto board. T20 again. And we're just going to use two, two screws. One. Keep going. And two. And what we're going to actually do before we do that, I'm just going to slide this back in. Just put it in a couple of turns because I'm going to actually use that to remove the head and rear off the cylinder because it is a lot easier for you guys out there that don't have vices. This is a sealed kit, so it's a brand new one. I've had two of them sat there not doing anything, waiting for me to record a video. I just never got around to it. This might be a slightly long video, not too sure how fast I'll get through this, so if you get bored, I fully understand. So we've got bits and pieces in here to get done with a new rear piece. And these, this kit also comes with the tool. Great. So we're going to use that. We're going to use the fixtures of the gearbox just to slightly loosen these off. We're not taking them off all the way. It's just going to make our life a lot easier when we get to pulling the cylinder apart. So we can remove the two screws, the T20, or Torx 20. Slide the cylinder off, we can set that to one side. And then we've got the gearbox to contend with. Now I do have the PCB jumper fitted. Um, anyone that's using these guns, I recommend doing this because they can be a little bit picky if your battery's voltage fluctuates. So one, 
two, three with a 2.5 mil Allen key or Allen driver. And pop the cables off there and we can slide this off to one side, nice and safe. And this is the gear box that really started it all. Um, I need a three mil, I have one handy, I have a three mil here. A lot of people seem to be under the misunderstanding that I'm currently running the T238 motor. Now they were very kind to send me a motor and I will be testing it, but just not in this MDR. I have two. So I'm gonna pull the motor out. Make sure it doesn't drag everything towards it. We've got two more screws, which are a three mil Allen key. So we're gonna pop these two bolts out. Nice and quick. And uh, these gearboxes are actually quite a delight to work on because it's just, you ain't got nothing springing out yet. You'll see them, the gears modified. Now for Liam, I'm gonna be installing the new gear just because it makes sense. I will of course ship him a, that gear as well as a spare in case he needs it. So we can pull out the gear. Now one thing that I thought, thought was really weird, um, when Silverback are doing the video for fitting this gear, they're using really sharp tweezers to apply the grease. And, and they're using this stuff. Yeah, don't want that, do we? Not when we've got the, uh, the Jaeger 1, and I don't need tweezers <laughs> to apply it. We're just going to pre-grease this a little bit. We don't need, no. And this is the reason why they're in this pen, because it just makes it super easy. We're not over applying it. And we can brush it in. And we're not trying to do something that should be really easy and making a right pig's ear of it. Sorry, Silverback, but I did pick that up on your video. It was awkward to watch. Not throwing any hate at you. I'm just saying there's easier ways to do this. We can just use the click function to apply just what we need. You know, we don't want to over apply it. And then I'm going to be going, because I've modified this gear from the standard gear, it's going to work a little bit differently. So I'm going to pop it onto the shims I have installed. And I'm going to check it. So the mesh there seems to be really good. I'll apply some grease on the back side. Keep it nice and lubricated here. And then I'm going to pop the casing back on. We'll pop this in just in case I've got it right the first time. Would be nice, wouldn't it? That all goes together. Seems to turn okay. Everything seems to mesh okay. So I think that's going to work. Oh, when we put it together and test it, if need be, I could take it apart again. It really doesn't take long at all. So we'll pop the two 3 mil Allen bolts back in the casing. If you're doing this to a bog standard MDR, you are going to have to spend quite a bit more time shimming. Just take your time with it. There's loads of videos on how to shim properly. And we've got our first issue there, so it's a little bit tight. So the gears aren't spinning. It's not a problem. Two bolts and we can have that back out. Like so, so it is touching that side. It's a little bit tight, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna check what shims we've got in there. So let me grab something to do that. It has been a while. Got small shims. They do, they do give you shims in the box, but it's not rocket science. I'm gonna pull these shims off. See what we've got going on. So we're gonna place that one back on, along with the thin one. 
And again, you'll have to spend time doing this because they're all slightly different. Get a cloth here just to wipe my hands. I'm going to pop it back together. I'm not going to put the anti reverse ratchet in this time. See how much nice and easy that spins. I'm going to check the side to side ply. Tiny bit. We can probably do a little bit better than that. So, let's see what we've got in here. Some nice thin shims. Thank you, Silverback. That's the thick one we don't want. So, you can pop this back open. That's actually held in place there. The thin shim. I'm just gauging off the movement that I saw when it was together. So, pop those on there. We can pop it back together. Just do it incrementally. Um, the more times you shim this stuff, the more of an idea you'll get on how much you need to change. Again, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. Don't be frustrated if you don't get it right the first time, just persevere. They give you plenty of shims in the package, so you've got more than enough to do it. And we still screw together and we're spinning nice and freely. We're just gonna check the side to side play. It's within tolerance, that's good. And we'll pop this back open. Again, apologies if this is a long video, but you guys have spoken clearly in the previous videos and you have mentioned you do like me talking over this stuff because it makes it easier to understand. So if it's helped you in any way, this video would appreciate you just getting involved, like, subscribe, like good stuff. Or if you're feeling really saucy, head down to the comment section below and get involved. So we're good to go on that. I'm going to quickly spin these together. You have to be careful putting these ones in as well. I've seen a few of these thread really easy. It's just, I don't know if it's a case of how they've tapped them, um, but you know, it needs to be mentioned. So we can use the same three mil Allen key to pull this old motor adjuster out. And we have New motor adjuster we got in here. We've got springs, we've got clips. But what we want is we want this screw, which is a big beefy screw. Have I got something big enough that will fit that to hand? Let's just grab a beefy torx. We don't need insane pressure on this screw so we can thread that in a little bit once we've threaded that in a little bit we can take this with a flat edge towards the bottom don't worry about where it's set right now in fact even what I would do is wind it out because we're going to be setting this in just a moment but yeah I'm fudging this up now spoke too soon didn't I screw that in and then we're going to pop the motor back in, put the motor plate on top of that, 3mm allen bolts, pop those in. I'm going to leave this video raw, unedited as much as I can, just so you guys know, I'm not pulling any fast ones doing stuff off camera, he says. I'll probably go in post edit and just remove all the useless bits of the video, but I'll try not to. So they give you spare clips for the pins, and we've got spare springs, so we'll get round to that. The springs are probably for the nozzle and the piston. And then we've got, what's this in here? What is this? So we actually have an updated electronic set, so we'll be putting that in as well. They've got sheathing on the back here to protect it. So Liam, if you are watching, what I'm gonna do 
is I'll put this in the box as a spare and I'll put the new one on there just because it's got, you know, sheathing on the wires to protect them. So while we pull that PCB jumper off, let's get it fitted to the new one. So as well as getting a cool gun, you're going to be getting a bunch of spares as well. Right, that's done to one side. We can fit the board with the screws off the old one. You can obviously see they're very similar. They've got protective bits here. That's about it all as I can see. The, sen the Hall Effect sensor does look slightly different. These parts are the same. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And go on there, we're going back down to the 2.5mm Allen key, or Allen driver. Again, you don't want to be over tightening these screws, you just want it snug down in place so it can't move. One, two, and three. Again, just slightly turn it with my fingertips, not putting hard any torque onto it. And the reason they've done that sheathing is just because the wires can slightly rub. I've never had any problems with this one. I did add it as a service afterwards to machine the gearboxes, but it was a, an ex, another expense. So with this one, we shouldn't need it. We could pull these sheathed wires down and attach it to the motor. Spin this round. So I always had the red or the positive towards the front and the negative towards the back, like so. Right, so the gearbox is done. We can test it. Um, so we can pull the semi-auto board out of the rifle. And we'll see how this thing sounds with the new gear. So we've got that plugged in. I need a battery. These are 11.1 volt ASG LiPo batteries. They're a thousand milliamps. Let's give it a go. It actually sounds really good off the bat. So, wind this in slightly and test it. Sounds really good. So we'll disconnect the battery, disconnect the control, the uh, trigger board. We can remove these wires, and then what we're going to do, we're going to put this on here. We can hold the center screw in place. This might be a bit hard to see. So while I'm holding the center screw in place, I'm just going to turn the tool on that nut. This is difficult to record as I'm doing it. And just nip it up so it backs, it stops the screw from backing out. Very good addition. Thank you, Silverback. So the lower part's done. Gears are sat, they're clocking nice, that's good. We're going to get to the cylinder. Uh, I'll just use this tool. Out there, out comes a spring. This is the low power, what the one joule ish spring. Pull the whole thing apart. Now, this is freshly serviced. Um, there's a bit of grime in there which I'll wipe off and renew. But it really hasn't seen a lot of rounds, this gun, since it was redone, rebuilt. I'm going to wipe off all that grease, peace of mind. We're actually going to use just something that sits in the holes of the piston, like so. And while I'm holding that, we need to get an iron key down there. I think it's a three mil. It is a three mil, and I'm just going to brace that 
Oh, that actually wasn't. Uh, that is factory. It's not not tight. I don't think that was going to come loose, to be honest. Got a nice bit of bite there, and we're going to unscrew that. It will come out as an assembly like so. We can remove the piston and the piston head. We'll give the piston head a wipe. We can take that section. We've got new parts in here. So with the new parts, we've got a new bolt. We've got a new sleeve. And we've got a new spring. Ta-da! There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this onto the Allen key. It's still a 3mm. We're going to slide this into the piston and through. I'm going to hold it there like so. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Loctite to this screw because we don't want it coming loose. Oop, I'm going to drop it first. This stuff's actually really good. I haven't had it come loose on anything I've applied it to yet. And it uh, can be removable, so it's not like it's locked on there and you're going to mess the piston or the screw up trying to uh, take it apart if you need to. Like that. With that on there, I'm going to by hand just screw that down. I'm going to place this tool. You can use any tool for this, this really. It's just to lock into the piston head. And tighten it up like that. Now we've done that, what we're going to do, we're going to just get something to get behind this old feeding o-ring like so. We can pull any other bits of debris or sort of anything out of there as well. Nice and clean. Like I say, it's already been looked after. So we pop the, uh, we don't need the spring. What am I getting that out for? New feeding o-rings, they give you two, so we've got a spare as well as the new one. Pop that into place. It does feel quite a bit uh, quite a bit softer. What did I do with that one? Just pulled it out and it's disappeared on the bench. Where did it go? Oh there it is. Oh, they're comparable really. Maybe a little bit harder on the red one. So there's our piston done. What we're going to move on to now is this unit and they're telling you that you need to use a vice for this that's absolute rubbish you don't uh, this is what size is that i think that's two and a half mil which goes in very nice i don't think we get the three mil in there no maybe if it was a three mil pin so two and a half goes in there nice and then we're going to use the tool of supply again which is very nice of them go to the smallest hex on there and try should have really done it like that there we go it takes a bit of pressure just to break the loctite take your time don't slip we're not in a race so we'll remove this it'll eventually get to a point where it's quite loose and we can Spin this out, drop the components, like so. That is the old spring, so we'll take that out. Here we have the new spring, which is quite a bit better. I'm going to clean off the Loctite off this nozzle. They attack it with like a huge, a huge uh, metal brush, which I really don't recommend that at all. Right, so we've got that. We've got the spring. Was there anything else that needed to go in here? I don't think there was. So we've got spare clips, spare o ring. That's for the stock. So it's the spring that's the new part. We can pop this back into place. Pop the spring on. We can pop the washer on. And then before we do that, we're going to take the nozzle. Move it around the right way. 
that we're going to apply our thread lock. You don't have to go overboard with this. I really do like this liquid molly stuff. It's uh, a medium type. It's worked very well in almost everything that I've used it in. We'll push the washer down on there so we can start the thread on the nozzle. Screw it in by hand and then we're going to switch over. You just have to be careful that this doesn't catch in between the two parts, the washer. So you want that to be nice and moving up and down the metal sleeve there. I mean the, the spring, not the uh, sleeve, the spring. You don't want the spring to catch in there. Right, we'll take our little Allen driver again. Start to screw these parts together while just maintaining that spring doesn't catch in the threads. Like so. Just take your time. This can all be done with very basic tools. Make sure that slips over the sleeve like so. And then you want to give it two of your best manual ugga duggers that you can. So one, two. That's your cylinder head done. So we can place that on there, grabbing it really nice. We're going to take our one pen, which is the grease, and we're going to just liberally apply it on the rails. Like so, make sure we've got plenty of lubricant on there. Do both sides. You can use the grease or the, the one grease or the one oil for this, it doesn't matter. Just got to remember that the one oil is a bit more runny compared to the grease, obviously. And either will do the job, they just apply a little bit differently. Like so, once we've done that, you can slide that into the cylinder. Now there's plenty of different ways to put these in. You just want to make sure it sits in the rails properly. If you've worked on system of PTWs before, you know all about this. So if it stops when you're screwing that in, it's not lined up properly. Don't force it. It should go in nice and easy. We're not going to uh, talk that up just yet because we need to put the rear section on. If I can do it properly, like that. I'm going to pop this back in for now, but uh, before I ship this out to Liam, what I'll be doing is just chronoing it, stopping the spring out to get it to the power that he requested. Slide that on. We've got the two T20 countersunk stainless steel bolts there. That's the T25. Spin, 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 spin. In their video, they really taught these screws down, but I really don't recommend it. I never have done. Just nip them up. They ain't going anywhere. You keep turning that, you'll thread it. Put the motor connectors on. Bish, bash, bosh. And we're done. So we're going to fit this. We're going to slide it back into the rifle now. I can pull the little connector out. Slides into the gearbox. So just make sure that cable doesn't get squashed with the uh, cylinder going in. You can pop this connector in like so. And we're good to go. So we'll take now, let's move this box out of the way. We take all these extra components them in the box for Liam. We're going to take the two securing plates. Pop this down. T20. On the one side. We're going to flip this over. Put it on 
on the other side I do need to do his MDR nub which I'll be doing off camera it's just really easy you slide the barrel out take the hop, hop nub apart hop rubber hop unit apart but I can't speak now so it's super simple and easy to do I'm going to pop the backing plates on now so which one was it so that's for the pin and slide this in use our countersunk t20 screw just line it up properly they can only really go in one way and they are different to either side i'll flip this up on its top and we need to put the pin in first so we put the pin in and then we slide the little circle clip over it so in goes the pin Slide the circlip over it. If you push down with the, as you push down with the circlip, just rock it forwards to backwards like that, and it will fit straight over, and it won't cause you any trouble. So that goes on there. We do the screw. See, this is really easy. It's a really easy gun to work on, to be honest. Um, if you're not having to machine the gears down to fit properly. But as as bad of a start this gun had you know silverback did come through with an upgrade kit so you can't fault them for that we'll put these plates on like that and like that these can be swapped over to either side the last thing we've got to do is fit the new book pad which is probably the best but <laughs> apart from the gear it's probably the best thing that they did on this so T T twenty. Remove that screw. Just pulling it out as I do it, as I loosen it off. You can pull that piece out, set it to one side. You can push the other piece out. And this is what people are doing to change the batteries over easier. Um, that comes out, you have the new piece, which is just a slide on job, which is very much the same part, it's just got a different thing here, and it's losing two of the splines there, and you don't have the bit that sits into the top receiver. So we need this section here, it's got three screws in there, so they don't really count, I mean, can you guys remember when I had that spare screw inside the receiver? So you'll need this part and you'll need the sling point from the other, uh, the old one. So we push that part in. Before we do that, we're going to take one of the screws. And the only reason this side has a screw is so that you can use a tool to torque it up. So if you didn't have a screw in this side, you wouldn't be able to use two T20s to torque them against each other to tighten it up. So that slides in from that side. We've got the standard one goes in from this side and then we pop the other t20 in and nip it up you can grab it on the inside if it helps it can't be over tightened um, so I do have another t20 here somewhere I think that's it so I'm going to use that just to do it like so. spare screw and the standard parts can go in the box for his spares, same as the board. And now this new plate is on, to put your battery cap back on, you literally just slot that into place. And you slide it on like that and it holds it. Will this potentially come off on the field? I hope not, but that's how easy it is. So we can flip this round. Because you used to have to drop the whole lower of the gun off to get it, uh, the battery installed, which was a pain in the ass. One pin. Make sure we're not snatching anything. Which I don't think we are. Two pin. And the third pin will go through when we do it. So now we can slide a battery in. The Dean's connector is very short on the stuff that they provide. So we slide our battery in, 
we take our connector we can hopefully you just do this off camera or I'll try and do it on camera but you need to hold that whilst pushing it on like so put your cables in and out the way and then what you would do is you'd slide the battery cap on saying that will it come off it's got the other pin there so that was just a mistake on my part and you pop your pin in it's nice and tight and we're good to go so we should be good to fire now so it's semi on your board the gun sounds super smooth and now i will get to um doing the extra bits for liam Thank you very much for tuning to this long video. I am, I am sorry that it's longer than the official silverback one, but many of you have been asking me to do it. That's how to fit your V2 upgrade kit. It's very easy. Take your time with it. Thanks for tuning into this new video. Any other requests, let me know. But as always, from me and Bench, we'll see you in the next one.